Okay, so we're going to start by downloading the the Flask application to a to our computer, and so that we can kind of like uh, port it to this uh, Docker container. And uh, I'm here in Cloud9 with my Flask block application, and there's a handy um, uh, feature here in Cloud9 where you select the whole like uh, the the top application folder and then you right click on it and you'll see there's an option called download now if you click on download it'll start downloading that um the whole the whole project and uh let me put it here so you can see it's downloading the whole the whole project down to my computer so now that it's downloaded i'm gonna do show in finder and i have it right there so what you want to do is you want to create a, a folder that's within your home folder. In this case, mine is uh, J-O-R Escobar. And put the, um, the, that tar file in, in that home folder. If you're using Windows, um, it should be the same thing. I'm not sure exactly. I'm not going to show it to you because I don't, I don't support uh, Windows, but um, uh, the caveat here is that uh, Docker can um, can install or can mount um, kind of like directories within a container so that you can kind of like um, have a live or a uh, real time uh, editing ability for that code in that in that uh, in that folder. But um, that folder needs to be um, within your 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 user. So that's why we need to, to put it there. So I'm going to drag it here to my home folder. And if I check here, I have now this uh, flash blog. Um, I don't like to put it like on the very like top level. So I'm going to create like a, a new folder here called um, apps. And then um, I'm going to clean it up. And then I'm just going to drag it there within apps. And now I have the... Uh, home folder apps uh, and I just double click in here and you will get a kind of a an expanded version of the flash blog so you can move to trash this and and now I have like the whole application there um, so um, now that we have it there if I go to my back to my terminal and I have this uh, this is the docker kind of um, the Docker um, um, tool um, that I just started here, and um, if I check, uh, I'm on the um, on my on my user home folder. Uh, I should see the apps folder there, and now I need to change there. See the apps, and then I see the Flask blog. If I change Flask blog there, I see the application in there. And the, the folder or the directories, users, JOR, Escobar, apps, flash blog. So that's cool. As long as we have that um, available there, then we can, we can have access to, to, this, um, to this directory within the, the Docker file. Okay, so the next thing I did here was I downloaded Atom. Um, Atom is a um, kind of like the the editor, code editor that I'm using these days. And it's very similar to the Cloud9 editor. And it also looks similar to Sublime, which is another editor that uh, people are kind of using. But just download it. Um, it's uh, both for PC and Mac. And, um, but if you want to use something else, um, you know, you can, you can do so. But um, I definitely um, like Adam to, to, um, <clears throat> to, to do my code editing these days. Um, so why, why do I need Atom? So what I want to do now and what we need to do is we need to create something called a Docker file that allows us to, uh, describe what the, what a Docker container running our Flask application would look like. So again, it's kind of like, it's a blueprint to create an image. Uh, and then from that image, we can create containers, kind of like the, that's what the workflow is. Right now, as you remember, we have the, um, if I do a Docker uh, PS uh, A, I have this uh, images that are not running at the moment. Um, 
I have my MariaDB, which is the DB container that we, we used uh, before. And then we have this two hello world. Um, but we, what, what we want to do is we want to create a new, a new image um, uh, called uh, Flask uh, blog. And in that Flask blog, we're going to be able to um, uh, run our Flask application. And that Flask application is going to be its own container, its own server, if you will. And that server is going to connect out to the MariaDB or the DB container to be able to read and write from, from the database. Okay, so um, I don't want to uh, kind of like type this uh, whole thing um, uh, bit by bit. Um, so what I want to recommend that you go to my GitHub account and look for um, the Flask blog repo. So it's github.com slash from zero edu Flask blog. And in there, you'll see it, this is like the Flask application, but this version of the Flask application runs uh, using Docker. And I want to look at this Docker file. And this Docker file, you always put at the kind of like the root or the top uh, folder um, of your application. And what this does is that it's, it, it describes what, the, um, what that server running the Flask block would look like. So let me just go like really uh, quickly on this. You can you can search on the internet for more information on how this works. But basically, the first thing that you need to define is what the what the base operating system for this Docker is, or if it's based on another image. Um, like we could, for example, base it on the MariaDB or the MongoDB, something else. But in this case, we are running a CentOS, which is a, a type of Linux as the base image. So that's going to pull that from the GitHub, I mean, from the Docker Hub repository. And then it's going to do these modifications on it uh, when it when it's built the first time, right? So it's going to run, uh, run this command called yum install. So yum is basically a package manager. And it'll install a bunch of, uh, of libraries that we need to have in this container for you to be able to, um, to uh, kind of like install Python packages and connect to MySQL from Python and other other things. Um, think of this packages already are installed in Cloud9, so we don't have to do this part, uh, but we need to do it in this case because we're starting like a, a container from scratch. Then this second uh, command installs pip. Then it makes a directory within the container called slash opt slash flash blog. OPT is, is a common directory to put uh, kind of like applications on servers. I always use it when when I deploy my applications. Um, and then it it makes the work directory that uh, directory. So any any operations uh, from that point on are going to be referencing that that directory. Um, then it's going to add requirements txt from our local computer to the OPT flash blog. So at that point, like we only have the this directory called flash blog and then a requirements txt, which is going to be exactly the same requirement txt that we have on our on our flash blog application. Finally, it installs those uh, those libraries. Um, and and this is something important for you to understand. We are not using virtual environments on Docker because Kind of like the, the, the point of virtual environments is to have mini instances or mini like servers within a server. But in this case, you have your whole server is that's that's the whole that, that machine belongs to you, so to speak. So we don't need to like install things um, on virtual environment, although you could do that. Uh, but I'm here. I'm just installing server wide all the packages that we um, we described on requirements txt and uh, finally we add a um, all the contents of the local directory of the of the directory that that we're running this command from which is basically all like our flask all, all this all these files it's going to kind of like copy inside that opt flask blog um, and then this line is is uh, i think i repeated it so you can edit it out or, or take it out. Um, but in any case, this is this file you need to have on the on the root directory before you install 
uh, or you instantiate or create the, the Docker container for it. 